Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTanker.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Today's video is going to definitely be very console-focused, as quite frankly there is a ton of console-related news, so I've decided to throw it all in together in a nice, tidy video. There is a possibility that there'll be a second video today, which will probably be recorded by Amy. Uh, I'm actually recording this news really early, um, because there is just so much stuff that's happening. But anywho, uh, we're going to start things out with yet further reports on the Nintendo Switch. If you're a subscriber and you have been for a couple of weeks, you'll know that I actually had an exclusive that Nintendo were indeed planning to put out a new Switch. It wasn't going to happen this year, uh, it was most likely going to be next year onwards, and apparently the company had tested at least two revisions of the hardware, the first being tested last year, so if you're watching this in the far-flung future, that's 2019, and then early testing, I think it was February from memory, but I haven't watched, uh, I, I, sorry, I don't have the notes um around so it might be March but anyway the testing as well was early this year for a new revision which apparently had some architecture changes but we've also of course recently yesterday I covered this had a Bloomberg report and that stated that the switch could support up to 4k resolution and naturally would also be accompanied by a bump in performance and uh, it looks like this is going to be the so-called switch pro so it's not going to be a new generation it's not going to be like an entirely new console it's going to be a little bit like we saw with the playstation 4 to the playstation 4 pro and xbox one to xbox one x naturally um nintendo have done kind of similar as well with various uh, variants of the game boy and uh, 3ds which have also maintained backwards compatibility of course with their pre uh predecessors but anyway uh, there is a new piece of news which has been uh, floating around, and this is thanks to the um, Federal Communications Commission, FCC, and these are filings, and it seems like there are a plethora of things which are going to be changing on the Switch. The first is that the SOC, System on a Chip, which of course contains things like memory controllers, the processor, the GPU, and so on and so on, that is going to be changing. There's also a change in memory, and the CPU board itself is also going to see a redesign. And this, of course, is in a, uh, big to actually support those new updated components. Naturally, those two things alone, uh, taking the board itself out of the equation, the sock and the memory, are what you would expect if there is a new revision of hardware. I personally believe that it's going to be Volta or later, a Tegra-based architecture from NVIDIA. Um, and I am pretty damn certain it's still NVIDIA, not only because it makes logical sense for backwards compatibility, but furthermore, that's what I was told by my source. There were later revisions of Nintendo's hardware. I was also told that audio performance of the new Switch is apparently quite important, as, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, where I covered this exclusively, um, long story short, the uh, Switch itself had originally been intended to um, ship with a different revision. I was told it was going to be Pascal and not, uh, of course, as we saw, Maxwell. And this was due to pricing issues and NVIDIA and uh, um, Nintendo being unable to kind of, let's say, reach a decision, <laughs> reach an agreement. Uh, but again, you could check out that video if you want more information on performance and that type of stuff. I think it's almost positive that um, it's going to be DLSS or some type of upsampling tech. Yes, technically speaking, running the tensor cores, which of course are responsible for upsampling, does slightly increase the power consumption on the sock versus just running CUDA cores. But given the additional performance, it's a relatively cheap... Um, cost in terms of power and silicon budget and also i don't suspect nintendo would heavily customize the chip there may as matt michael and myself were discussing in a recent podcast there may be some small changes to the hardware or maybe of course custom changes on like let's say the bios and os to support backwards compatibility especially because if it's being coded that is a game which is for legacy support uh coded to the metal, 
there is timings involved and, you know, it could be a bit tricky in terms of software to get it working. So there's probably some type of backwards compatibility. But then again, I'm not aware of the intricate details of this new hardware and how it functions. For all we know, it could be similar to the PS5 and its backwards compatibility or even like how Microsoft are doing it for the Xbox Series X. I don't know if that's the case. I'm not saying that is true. I'm just throwing a few examples out there because, frankly, we don't have enough information yet on how this is achieved. I don't think this uh, is going to be like, you know, <laughs> Xbox One X performance like 6T flops and capable of running games at, well, you know, high resolutions with ray tracing or anything like that. But it will do what Nintendo want it to do. It will offer more grunt... So people who are playing on like a you know a, a high resolution TV like well let's say 4K and perhaps uh, native HDR support, but also it has tons of potential when it comes to handheld and portable mode too. For example, the games could run on a 1080p screen. There's really nice, of course, uh, uh, screens which are 1080p which have higher refresh rate. The game could render internally at 540p. And then it could upsample, and it would take a ton of performance headroom off of the uh, GPU. Maybe it would even be more power efficient if all of the CUDA cores weren't running, or perhaps weren't running uh, to their highest clock frequency. Again, I'm spitballing. I don't know the exact details. But I think it's pretty sure that we will see, at some point or another, this new Nintendo console launch. It looks like Nintendo are going to be waiting until next year. A, that is... Um, the timings that would make sense for this, after all, uh, the rumours from Bloomberg also stated that, but with FCC, it's probably that not going to happen this year. And also, uh, one of the head honchos, I believe it was the CEO of Nintendo, from memory, they also stated that there's going to be no Switch model uh, new revision this year, which of course does not discount next year, which is what I'm guessing will be the case. Phew, that was a lot of talking about Nintendo. Let's move on to the next thing, and that is the PlayStation 5. Um, there's actually a few things for the PS5. The first of which is that the registration page to uh, pre-order the next generation console is now live. This is only available for the US customers. There will be a limited quantity of PS5 consoles available for pre-order, so we'll be inviting some of our existing consumers to be the first to pre-order one from PlayStation. Pre-order reservations are taken on a first-come, first-served basis. So once you get an invite via email, we encourage you to follow the instructions and act fast. And then there's also some FAQs as well. What do you get to be able to pre-order and stuff like that? And essentially, you either get to choose the uh, digital edition or the standard version. You get controllers and whatever else you need. And you are not allowed to purchase more than one pre-order per PSN ID. So obviously this is in an effort to cut down scalping, um, which is probably uh, going to be a thing unless uh, Sony can mass produce tons of consoles. I am hearing that there's going to be about 10 million of these. This is something that I actually was going to cover in uh, a different video, but I basically got told that the 10 million figure, um, which is supposedly how many Sony are producing, is correct. Um, and they basically are doing this for a couple of reasons. One, they feel relatively confident in the sales potential of the system, but also because of cough, cough, cough thing that's going around. I'm still not sure if I can say the word or not because there's conflicting information. Cough, cough, cough. Um, if there is a second wave of that, Sony don't want to be caught with their pants down, and if manufacturing, especially if it's in a different region as well, they don't want this, like, well, shortage. They want to have at least some inventory that's kind of reserved. So hopefully they do have enough systems. Um, it will be very interesting to see how all of that comes to um, the fray over the next couple of um, over the next couple of uh, months, though. And I'm very curious to see the pricing. We've got some info on the Xbox Series X pricing as well. Uh, while we're on the subjects of the PS5, Jace Scal, who has now actually confirmed my uh, request for following, so thanks very much to him if he does happen to be watching this video. Uh, he's linked to a ton of stuff for the PS5. Assuming this information is correct, I can't verify uh, the good portion of this, but what I can tell you is Silent Hill is 
basically on the way. It's a PS5 exclusive and will likely have a demo prior to its official release. It will launch late 2020 or early 2021. It's well, basically a soft reboot and is being created by Japan Studio and Gravity Rush uh, developers for the um, producers. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, most people knew at this point that Silent Hill was incoming. This is not him necessarily leaking something that's entirely new, but it looks like the um, confirmation is pretty much solid at the moment for some new Silent Hill. Honestly, I've had it confirmed as well. I had it confirmed at the same time as the PC version and PlayStation 5 version of Bloodborne, which I'm also really super duper hyped for. I don't know if Silent Hills it, or Silent Hill or whatever it's going to be called is coming to the PC and I haven't seen any screenshots or anything like that but I'm pretty sure that uh, it is legitimate at this point. And speaking of uh, software, there is something um, from Call of Duty. As you are likely aware, we've had tons of announcements recently regarding uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War it's a very um, long title, uh, but anyway, uh, I guess most people are just going to refer to it as Cold War. Um, but anyway, uh, there is basically confirmation, this is on VentureBeat, so credit to them, that we will see 4K resolution and refresh rates hit 120 frames a second. This seems in relation to both next generation consoles. They've also said, of course, the normal crap, like uh, it's going to have far better uh, or faster, excuse me, loading times, because, well, you know, of course. And they've also said that they want to make sure the frame rate is responsive and want to feel that there's nothing technical side to prevent you having a good time. They will also have real-time ray tracing, and this is actually confirmed by the developers themselves. So this is going to be real-time ray tracing with uh, very impressive global illumination, I'm looking forward to the game. I mean, I'm I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm not exactly what you could call a Call of Duty fan. Like, I like the single player, which I know is, like, not the point of Call of Duties. But for me, the campaigns are about five, six hours, which is kind of perfect. You know, I, I like to buy the games when they're a bit cheaper. They've gone on sale. I just blast through the campaign and I have myself, like, a five, six hour gaming session just enjoying it. And then it's just, you know, it's fun. Some of the stories have also been pretty damn fact profound. Uh, the obvious ones pop to mind. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested in seeing what is actually going to be the thing with the next generation. And finally, this is the last piece of PlayStation 5 news, and then we're going to move on to the Xbox thing. The PlayStation 5 is confirmed. This is thanks to a Brazilian tech blog, and they've actually uh, uncovered the PlayStation 5 wireless specifications. And it supports both Wi-Fi 6, yay, and also Bluetooth 5.1. I won't read out all of the specs here because, well, to be honest with you, they're kind of dry. But uh, Wi-Fi 6 is way faster than Wi-Fi 4. Uh, technically speaking, for the original PS4, which used Wi-Fi 4, compared to Wi-Fi 6, we're looking at up to 32 times faster the transfer rates. That does mean... Of course, uh, assuming that your network is able to, you know, achieve this. If you if you're dialing in with a 56k modem, well, bub, I've got bad news for you. However, the other benefits of Wi-Fi 6 as well is that it's more stable. So, technically speaking, if you've got tons of devices in the area, either in your house or maybe you live in a compartment, uh, apartment block, excuse me, or something like that, and an actual um, physical connection, you know, an Ethernet cable is not possible. This is definitely going to give you a better experience, and hopefully it will be a little bit less laggy too. Hoi! And the very final thing um, that I'd like to cover today is uh, the Xbox Series X. Apparently it's had its pricing leaked again. There's another YouTuber, Alana Pierce. You uh, probably remember there's already been a leak about this. But I won't go through whole, her whole video because that's obviously unfair to her. So it will be linked, as I said, in the video description. But she's apparently got uh, retailers who have confirmed the Xbox Series X prices. And honestly, they are exactly in line with what I expected. 500 for the um, Xbox Series X console with a controller being 60. Uh, and then obviously you've got different uh, variants of the controller 
uh, all of them being 60 bucks. The most important thing, of course, is the actual console itself, which again is showing as uh, 600, um, sorry, 500. It looks like it's pounds, so I can assume it's going to be roughly that in dollars as well if you do the exchange rate. I honestly feel that uh, concerns of the console hitting like $600 were not really like justified. Uh, when the leaks of 600 I was like, yeah, that's just too much. Um, it's just, it's not realistic. I still think there's a possibility Microsoft may drop the price a smidgen to try to undercut the PlayStation 5. However, I base this on nothing other than Microsoft being really aggressive at the moment. I don't know that for certain. It's going to be really interesting to see how the prices actually uh, affect things. Let's say both consoles end up being like a thousand bucks. So total, that is, so like 1,000 for both systems. Then, of course, you've got to purchase games. Naturally, you do have backwards compatibility with their predecessors, but you're not buying the consoles for, you know, support for the older games, let's be honest. Um, if you're someone who just wants to play by themselves, uh, then obviously you won't need to buy a second controller. But long story short, you're probably not going to be getting much change out of, like, 1,500, 1,600 um, that is, of course, once again, if assuming you want to buy several games of it, uh, especially if you need to renew PSN or Xbox and, um, you know, you maybe want a second controller or some other peripherals like the PlayStation 5 cameras or whatever else, then I wouldn't be surprised if you want both, it's going to probably cost you about $1,500. Um, which, honestly, considering it's two consoles with a ton of games, it's not bad. Um, if, of course, you only want one then, yeah, you're going to be looking around 700 bucks, I'd say, for, you know, to be fully outfitted with a couple of several games and whatever other bits and bobs you need. I actually have a friend who's planning to buy one probably next year, the PlayStation 5, and uh, he's basically going to be buying a new TV and everything else as well, and he just doesn't... He basically wants to see what the, what the launch is for both consoles, but he's airing towards the PlayStation 5 because... Uh, well, honestly, most of his uh, games are already on the PS4, so it's going to be interesting to see how all of this unfolds and what the uptick is. I'm curious to see exactly what the sales figures are for both of these consoles, not just in terms of competition against one another, but also in terms of how they fare on a market, which obviously has been, well, hit rather heavily with, uh, obviously, uh, economical challenges. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, also, one moment, uh, a lot of folks are messaging me, asking about the second part of the hot chips analysis. Uh, basically, on the weekend, I had a day or two off, and then I happened to not uh, be too well on the Sunday and uh, Monday. Um, so it basically put me back a couple of days, and honestly, I was only just starting to recover uh, on Tuesday, so I'm a little bit behind. I could have kind of rushed something up for part two, but I don't want to do that. I want to obviously do as much justice as possible to the material. So long story short, I'm working on the hot chips analysis now. Hopefully it will be ready at some point the weekend. Um, I don't want to make an exact promise because the previous one took me ages. It was a pretty damn long script and also I did, of course, an article with it as well. But um, as always, I'd rather do something properly rather than just kind of throwing something together. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and if you can share the video and stuff like that, that would be amazing. Bye for now.